Hi everyone, I'm Emily Sanford and I work in the Cool Worlds Lab here at Columbia. So I'm here to talk about the search for exoplanets, like the journey, the process. What are we thinking about when we embark on this search for other worlds? So as scientists, we have to be conscious that there's differences between what's true about the universe and what we can observe with any given experiment. So as an example, imagine that I'm interested in figuring out the population of New York City. Uh, that's convenient for me because I live in New York, so all I have to do is look out the window and count people. That's going to be my experiment. So, from here, you can see about one block of 120th Street. I happen to know that Manhattan has about 250 cross streets, each of which is about 10 blocks long. So all I have to do is count people for a while, then multiply my answer by 2,500, and that'll tell me the population of the island. Simple. So you might envision some problems with this method. Maybe my little segment of 120th Street isn't representative of the whole island. For example, if I did this experiment in Times Square, I'd get a very different answer. If I did this on a rainy day instead of a sunny day, I'd also get a very different answer. Maybe my angle out the window is really strange and I'm only seeing very tall people. Maybe my eyesight is terrible and I'm only seeing people who are wearing really bright colors. My point is, if I'm going to trust this method to figure out the population of New York, then I need to think through all of these various observational biases and try to account for them in my final answer. So we have to do the same accounting in science, and especially in astronomy, because we're so far away from everything we're studying. Like, I can't just go out and conduct an exoplanet census the way I could, in principle, knock on every door in New York City to count the people who live here. So when we look for exoplanets, we have to be careful to account for the biases inherent in our search methods. Here in the Cool Worlds Lab, we use data from the Kepler telescope, uh, which looked for exoplanets that transit in front of their host stars and cause them to appear to dim periodically as the planets orbit. So as with any scientific observation, uh, there's some biases which are inherent in the transit method. The main one is that we can't see any exoplanet that doesn't pass between its host star and us here on Earth. So if the planet is orbiting around perpendicular to our line of sight, then we can't see it at all. And as a result, we're actually blind to most exoplanets if we rely only on the transit method. So luckily, we can reasonably assume that the angle of inclination between an exoplanet orbit and our line of sight is random. Um, and as a result, the ones that we do see transit are representative of the whole population. That way we know we're not missing anything important. So besides this obvious geometric bias, uh, there's some subtler biases associated with the transit method as well. And David Kipping and I spent time thinking about those in a recent paper. So one of them is that we actually have seen in the Kepler data that we're more likely to see a planet transiting across the center or the midpoint of its star than to transit across the edge. So why should that be happening? If orbital inclination is actually random, then we shouldn't see a preference. So it turns out that the answer is that transits across the equator are actually easier to detect than transits across the edge. In other words, there's a detection bias. Uh, and the reason for that is that transits across the equator take more time because there's more of the star to cross. As a result, they're more likely to stand out against the random measurement noise in our data. There's another detection bias too, which is really interesting. So we know that we're more likely to see a big planet transiting in front of a star than a small planet, just because a big planet blocks more light, so its transit is easier to see. So until recently, we assumed that this bias towards big planets would be proportional to the area of the planet relative to the area of the star, which makes sense because that's the area that the planet is covering during the transit. However, when you take into account that we're more likely to see bigger planets transiting and that it's easier to see longer transits than shorter transits, uh, it turns out that we're even more biased against detecting small planets than we originally thought. So if you decrease the size of a planet, uh, it turns out there's then an outsized decrease in the probability that you'll be able to detect that planet. So if we're interested in detecting small Earth-like exoplanets, we have to remember that the transit method makes it difficult to see them uh, relative to the big planets. They're still out there, but our little window onto the universe makes it difficult to see and count them as they really are. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have questions, please ask them below in the comments and subscribe to see more updates from the Cool Worlds Lab.